Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. I'm Mike. And uh, we're gonna do a little bit of like a theory lesson here. Mike's gonna show me stuff that I don't know. Uh, I'm admittedly a, uh, a very average self-taught guitarist. Every time I teach myself a bit of theory, it just blows out the back of my head the next day. Uh, everything I know could be wrapped up in, you know, a handful of regular chords, some chords I don't know the names of and then a major and minor scale, and that's how I operate across all my playing. Mike does teaching. Mike knows theory. He's got a show called Theory Thursday, which you should all check out on YouTube. I'll put a link down below. And he's gonna take me on a little journey here, showing me how stuff actually works. You know, the theory behind music. Like you're gonna, you've got like a little bit of a lesson plan figured out. Let's go for it. Right on, and here we go. So, just so you guys are out there wondering, a lot of us know the C chord. I'm going to go ahead and start in the key of C, and I'm going to write down on the paper here and, and just give you a quick lesson on the rule of seven. Seven notes become seven chords. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate our C chord, and then we're going to put the C major scale in context. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, those are the intervals, and each interval will be representative of a chord. So I'm going to go ahead and write some symbols down here, and the big M will be the C, the little m will be the D minor, the three chord is an E minor, the four chord, you'll notice that I put it right next, to the three chord, that's gonna constitute a half step. Mm. And then our five chord, which is one of my key favorites, it's the dominant chord. I'll explain this in a moment, let me finish here. The six chord, very important chord, ladies and gentlemen. And then finally, our seven chord. So this is the preferred nomenclature. I don't understand what I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's what's going Ex on. Explain this to me. You, you just, it looks like you wrote down the, the recipe for M&Ms here. I don't... That looks hilarious, doesn't it? <laughs> so, sometimes when, when people are, are talking about the major uh, scale, they're going to say whole, whole, half, whole, whole, whole. And, and this is that. So you could think that from the one chord to the two chord is a whole step, okay. meaning that here is our C. The two chord is a D minor. Would you mind just playing each of these chords for me? For of course. You? Yeah. Excellent. And I'm then, already out of tune. And then our, I think that's okay. Do you want to tune? Feel free yeah, to I'll tune. tune while you uh, and then, uh, explain you know, more stuff. The three chord, ladies and gentlemen, will be the E minor. Our four chord is F. And after Ryan gets nice and tuned up, he's gonna play each of these chords. Our five chord is a G7. The six chord, the relative minor, A minor, and then finally, B half diminished. So, there we go. Now these are the seven chords in the key of C. And, um, All right, you want me to play through these now? Yeah, let's hear a one chord. Okay, and, and that's, that's the C? Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to respond to this. Clearly, this will be the one in Roman numeral. Our two chord will be the D minor. And let's proceed to our three chord, which is E minor. So that right there, ladies and gentlemen, those are your first three chords of the key of C. Our four chord, now that this is unique. We, we just go a half step up and our F chord. Excellent, let's go to G7. That's our five chord. We'll talk about him in a moment. And the relative minor is A minor. Okay, so let's stop right here and talk about the relative minor, everybody. This- I'm gonna have to rewatch this. <laughs> Am I going too fast? No, it's like, I'm realizing just how basic I am with this stuff. That's okay. I'm really going to try to simplify. This sure. looks a little intimidating. It does look like Greek. When I write this for my students, I have a few uh, uh, 
colored markers like orange and pink and green. And if I start, you know, like, if, if I color code this, it's easier on the eyes. So sure. when I'm filling it in like this, this is like, what are you writing? <laughs> Just like you said, the recipe for M&Ms, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> all right. So all I want to talk about for a moment. I mean, basically what's going on here is like if you're in the key of C major, then these are the chords that work in that. Correct. And there's just a bunch of terms for it that I don't know how to connect to those concepts quite yet. And that's okay. Yeah. That's a, that, a great way to, to respond to these chords so you and I can have uh, some communication is that we'll just talk about them uh, uh, numerically. So the C would be one, the D minor is our two chord. Uh, the three minor is our, uh, I'm sorry, what did I say? The three minor? Three minor. That, that's weird. That's is so that weird? It all um, sounds weird to me. <laughs> you could, you, if if three minor is wrong, I never would have known. <laughs> That's uh, well, I will I will do my best to keep our semantics you very could, clean here. You could be lying to me and playing a joke on me right now, and I wouldn't know. <laughs> so <laughs> hilarious. But as you can see, if I go to a new a new page, and if I just write this, Ryan, this will be easier on the eyes. It won't be so convoluted. Okay. So, so this is what you were initially trying to show me before I started questioning everything. Yes. And I think it's fair to say this is how I like to teach <laughs> the students, just so they start remembering some of the stuff. We have okay. a, the key, which is clearly C. Okay. And then there is a, there is a very important uh, note here, which is the six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now what happens there is that this is the A minor and we call that the relative minor. So that means that the key of C, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, is A minor. And the way I like to say that is, okay. here is the key of C heads. If we flip it to tails, this is the sad A minor. It's still the same chords. But now, this is where the C major scale fits with the A minor scale. And geometrically, on the string six, if I go to the eighth fret and I do this distance, if everyone can see this distance that I'm illustrating or, or doing right now with my fingers, this is the code of like, this is where you play your major scale, and this, a, a step and a half down, is where you play your minor scale. So here's C major, and then if I say one, two, three, four, five, six, locate your octaves, any of these A's are areas to play your A minor scale. So go ahead and play a C major chord for me. And uh, strum a little bit for me. I think it's fair to say that we can... No big mystery there. So here's what's really cool, Ryan. A lot of guys will, will use that A minor penta box, uh -huh. and they'll, they, they're they able to play C major licks. So uh, strum me a, a C major chord again. Now that's a familiar box because of A minor penta. Yeah. So a, a really neat way is that here's A, there's A, and here's A. So two octaves of A minor. So you, now you're getting into there, like I play a lot of lead guitar, you're getting into the area where I'm like familiar with this like hopscotch roadmap okay, cool. of the fretboard. Where it's like, yeah, if I'm playing C major, I'm often starting down here like. minor is right in that range there's just a, a difference of a couple notes but I can't really like explain why that works well do you know where the C is in there like in, in all that magicalness that you just played do you know where your C's are I don't like if I needed to like just pick the notes out of there to make a C chord right now like the, the thing I would do is I'd jump down here to do a bar chord that's but I good wouldn't, I wouldn't know where those notes are in the scale because it's, it's it's literally like a hopscotch diagram in my head of where I can be and where I can't be versus like knowing where the notes actually are, you know? And that's just a matter of uh, maybe how, you know, if in the context of a lesson, maybe how that information is transmitted to you. Sometimes we, you know, we, we, get in, we get influenced and inspired and then sometimes our friend will say the right thing. Right. 
and and then we like, oh, I'm gonna put that in my pocket. That's useful. I can do that <laughs> at practice. Right, right. You know, I, I I'm the same way still. I, one time I had to play a country song, a country song, and so I spent like 20 minutes on YouTube, like looking at country licks, and I walked away with just. And now every time I need a, like a country flavor, I just throw that in there. I don't know anything else, but that's like the thing that I picked up on, you know? That's really cool that you say that. Uh, I, I have one too. Uh, it, back to the, this A minor and C stuff. So if I do an A minor lick here, right? And I know that this is my C, right? Mm -hmm. So this is, this is the C and the major third. So this little bit is inside our chord. So what's really cool in these, these clever country guys, mm -hmm. they'll do a minor third and they'll, they'll bend it a half step. They'll go. And it sounds like some good honk and tonk yeah. right there. So what I like to do is I do this It lick. sounds like Chris isaac -y. Oh, big time. Beautiful. Yeah. Good, good stuff there. Well, now I'm never, I'm never going to abuse that little thing over and over again for I the hope rest of so. my life. <laughs> You know, the way that I do that, I this is just me personally. I'll, I'll, I'll load up this this C major lick right here. And then I come back down. There's A. I'll slide to C. And I'll grab the minor third and bend it major. Okay, so show me that first thing again. Okay, pinky on the eighth fret. It's a double stop. Right? And then I like to load up my fingers like this on the G string, not the one you're wearing, of course. But the uh... we talked about that off the camera. <laughs> <laughs> we were comparing. His is nicer. It's nicer. You know, you can tomato tomato the whole, and then something like that. And then fifth fret. to that 10th fret. Okay, I'm gonna start over. Okay, All so right. right here, eight. You really gotta preload this thing. Seven. It's like setting a trap for a critter or something. This, very well said. Oh, I like that. So, so now take that ring finger. Yeah, you did. Beautiful, and then catch it. C. Yeah, so there that's how you'll finalize that lick. And that's how we do it here on the Burke Studio. <laughs> yeah, give me some. Okay, okay, I'm gonna do it. Processing what I just played. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. I, it makes me want to like, I want to jump into like the things I already know, but I don't know where I'm starting from because it's like this whole new thing that my brain is still wrapping around. That was. Sounds a little redundant, but it's just a matter of how no. slow or, 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 you know. That's great. Do you really like it? I do like it. Great. Well, that's exciting. I'm happy what, about that. What I'm going to end up doing is just cannibalizing parts of it. Like next time I'm playing, I'm like, oh, I'm going to try that thing. And it's just going to be like, like, I'll mangle it somehow, but then find something that I like, you know? Turn on the dark world with that. <laughs> exactly. So, um, can we go one step further with this? Of course. So we were talking about the sixth chord, ladies and gentlemen. The sixth chord is the relative minor. Now, all that simply means is that the C major is binded with the A minor. We have, and that means all these aspects are going to come into play. The A minor means you can play the A minor chord in the A minor scale. Depending on some of us, that might be some news. So here's what I'd like to do now. When I was talking about the key of C is heads, we flip it 
to tails now. So now these symbols will change. So this is one through seven. There is the uh, the culprit or the 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 one that I'm going to start with now. An A minor, an A minor chord progression. Well, let's just say the minor chord progression will look like this now. And then you see all these repeating agents afterwards. And this will be the A minor chord progression. Okay, so this is the A minor. Can I hear an A minor, please? Of course. Okay, and then the A minor scale is going to be 0, 2, 3, 0, 2, 3, 0, 2. These are our seven notes. Beautiful. That seems, is that your favorite key or favorite scale? <laughs> a minor gets used a lot in surf rock. I, so, yeah. I think it's I'm great. I'm very familiar with it. So I wanted to hopefully add something to the arsenal there. Sure. It's like, let's take our surf rock and make it a little sci-fi. So it's all, like that. it's all about the two chord, ladies and gentlemen. This two chord, and what would the second note be? Question mark. Hence, hence gave away the answer right there. I didn't catch it. <laughs> what, would, what would our what? second note be? It's actually oh, B. B. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know. <laughs> so, okay. That's a solid like dad pun right there. <laughs> I'm full of them. <laughs> uh, this is going to be exciting, so bear with, all right? This chord is like this. The second fret, third fret, second fret again, and the third fret. It's a very tense chord, ladies and gentlemen. I like it. Very good. Now, the trap door with this chord. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. This repeats itself every minor third. And what that means is that we're on the second fret, you have this uh, form, so a minor third from here would be the fifth fret. Same chord, you want to make sure, so oh, it would oops. be five, six, five, six. Yeah. So you got to keep your fingers cramped. Good. Now where's a minor third from there, Ryan? Where are you? Is that the eighth? Uh, the eighth fret. Cool. So this keeps preceding itself, you know, from the eighth fret now the eleventh fret, okay, and then also now the twelfth fret. Uh, you mean the I, I'm sorry, fourteenth fret. I found it. All these guitar lessons I still can't count. So where did that start? That started. That started on the on B. the B. And this is an A minor. I'm gonna go ahead and play for the audience all seven chords, just so we can hear the context of yes. all this. So here's our one. Here's the two. And then our three. Four. It's the D minor. Our five chord is E minor. The six chord, F. And finally, the G7 is the seventh chord, which is quite the convenience there because it happens to be a dominant chord. Right. So another thing, another thing to acknowledge here is that these chord progressions, the major and the minor, they have three chord families in them. You have the, the major, the minor, and now these dominant ones. And the dominant chords, they're basically saying, Ryan, go home, play me a G7. Now land on C. It's like this happy resolution. So I'm gonna be, when I'm giving examples, since we're talking about the key of A minor, that particular instance was going from G7 to C. So uh, it, it's it's common to relate to, we can talk about the, uh, the C major. So I'm not the, oh, you're gonna have to edit this because that sounds a little confusing, but um, I won't know where to edit it. <laughs> so all, all I'm saying is that back to well, I'm, back trying to, I'm trying to wrap my head around this this chord shape here. You're saying this, this is a dominant chord shape, correct? And so I I think of in terms of scale runs when I'm looking at the guitar. So I'm looking at this, and the A is right there on the G string. So that's something I can follow visually 
for a minor like progression here like as far as the scale goes like good like I'm following I like that you're doing that because that that that's my segue now Okay. I want you to think about something really, really... And this is going to be really cool if you get this, and it's going to be fine if you don't get it. I probably won't get it. Play me the half diminished, please. Or, which is this two chord. Let's hear it. Now go up a minor third, which is that fifth fret. Okay. Yeah, and just so we're, we're clear, like, what is this minor third gossip? A minor third is a step and a half, so it would be from the second fret to the fifth fret, etc. Uh I like the sound of this. I've never played this chord shape before. I like the sound of it. Very happy about that. So that right there. Okay. Now look, look, look what's going on with our key here now, Ryan. The one is a minor. The two is your new favorite chord. Our <laughs> our three chord is C, which is also, you know, the, the, the major chord progression as well. But look at our four chord right here. What's the next letter in the alphabet, Ryan? It's D minor. It is. Now, look where you landed, though. Look, we're on that B half diminish, everybody. If we go up to the minor third, wow. So that's a D minor. So you can play D minor, which is in key of A minor, but you can also substitute it for that half diminished. So that would be like a replacement chord to, your, to your liking. Yeah. And you can really stay in one position longer, yeah. give, give the listener uh, some more virtuosity going, like, oh, what's going on with that chord? What's he doing? Be like, Ryan's good, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? He played that zigzaggy chord. Yeah. Whoa, what's that? <laughs> so, so, like, even this chord, though, do that again. I have to fight my fingers to go in that position. Sounds cool to switch it. So imagine like strumming like an A minor right here. Then we go to the four chord, and then now make it a half diminished. You can we can call, we call that like an imposter. Sure. You know. So if we're going, that's jazz. And now D minor. Fun, right? Yeah. So these are all to your disposal. And uh, the thing that I really wanted to highlight, my friend, is that even though we're in A minor here, and we have the two chord here, I wanted to make a fuss about your four chord substitution. It could be regular D minor, or it's a half diminished because of the trap door. That's what you're calling the trap door? The trap door is that this is, since it's this d diminished chord, and I would like to add that this is the chord that gets the least most attention from like songwriters. The least most attention. <laughs> <laughs> I said that on purpose. <laughs> now, you know, if you're the, if you're the piano man or, or Elton John, they're totally sneaking these chords in, in yeah. context. And, and, you know, it just sounds like, well, because they're harmony. pianists and they're smart. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> they exactly. actually have to know things. They can't just like play power chords their whole life and get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, that was the big gist of today. I hope it wasn't that long of a walk. I just wanted to to describe to our audience that you know the key of C is where we want to acknowledge these rules, and then we think about the relative minor, which is the six, and that is where this lesson is based on. I feel like I'm going to need to rewatch this video, even though I'm here experiencing it, 
I need to rewatch this like six times to actually like wrap my head around what's happening. I know that I walked away like with a couple new licks, a new chord, and that's progress. That's like learning something more than I've learned in like a while. Uh, but yeah, this is really wild stuff. It gets a little lofty. It does. Like I feel like I need to sit down with like a like glossary of terms and decode everything that I just like watched happen. Really? Yeah. Like I don't like. In my head, the way like the the fretboard is like written out is just the way that I learned from experimenting with it. So like to hear terms that like I don't know how they apply. Like I need to go and like figure out like what a dominant chord is <laughs> and things like that. You have my phone number now. Feel free to call me anytime you I'm like. I'm gonna call you three o'clock in the morning and be like, how do I find the sixth again? Where's the trapdoor? <laughs> <laughs> you're, like, you're like, what's the, what was that silly phrase that, 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 that moot point? I said, it's the most under, wait, wait, what did I say? I meant, I meant to say that it's it was the wasn't. most least used. Or it's something? the most least used. That, that's what I'll text you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most least used, but no, I, 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 feel, I, feel, I mean, you, you do lessons a lot. Like that's, that's like, how I keep the lights on. There you go. He keeps the lights on by doing lessons. Um, I think there's a lot of guitarists like me out there that, like are just afraid to go down this road of like theory and like understanding what we're actually doing. But I like just here and like you explaining it to me and mean still not really like wrapping my head around what's happening. I'm still like learned like a couple licks and a chord shape that I didn't know before. I think it's totally like something we should be checking out other guitarists that are like me to learn, even if we don't completely wrap our heads around you know, like all the ins and outs of theory and all like the, the crazy Eminem recipes and stuff here, <laughs> like you're going to learn something. And I think I need to work on that a bit more, like getting into these areas where I'm uncomfortable just so I can learn things that I wasn't expecting to learn. Like I wasn't expecting to walk away when you started writing down like math equations here, like expecting to walk away with like a country lick. I think that's cool. Uh, last year I had like done a, uh, a New Year's resolution to get better at guitar, and I don't know how good I actually did at that, but maybe I need to uh, explore theory more this year. Why not? Why not, right? Maybe it can be one, maybe it can be like Colin Scott and do like theory lessons on YouTube as I learn them. It's a good <laughs> idea. Once people teach me. If you like this video, like the format of someone coming in here and teaching me stuff I don't know, let us know down in the comments. I thought it was a lot of fun. I want to do this again, even if we don't get a lot of views, just for my own benefit. My so, pleasure. Thanks a lot. Welcome, Ryan. I'm looking forward to being on your show. Yes. Here in the near, near future. And we've got some other videos that we uh, recorded here today. We're going to mess around with some pedals. We're going to mess around with uh, a really wild pedal that is hard to explain. So keep an eye out for those. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.